Hi guys, welcome back to another Bourbon Santa video. And it's still Penelope Palooza! And today, we're gonna play around with some toasted stuff, okay? Now Penelope's putting out toasted versions of their whiskeys, okay? Now, okay, I think I'm gonna say okay like a million times. For some reason it's stuck, I don't know. I don't know why. Sorry about that, it is what it is. And we're just gonna go with it. I don't know. So this is a medium toast char level one. This is a medium toast char level three. And this is a medium toast char level five. All the same age, somewhere between three and five years. Um, these are all uh, this is batch 11, batch 13, batch 15. So, I thought it would be interesting to see how the different char levels play across a medium toast flight. So, we're going to do that. We're going to see, you know, I know I, I already did a sample review of four of these, and it was a blend of medium chars and heavy chars. And um, off the top of my head, I can't remember which one was my favorite. So we're just going to go into this. I've already reviewed this. I know I love it. Um, but I'm just kind of curious to see what the char level of the barrels, how it affects across a, a range of medium char finish. So we're going to do that. We're going to start with level one. This is char level one. Medium toast. 56% alcohol. This one's 57.5, and the last one over here is 57, I guess just 57, point nothing. <sighs> this is spicy, spicy on the nose. The youth shows up a little bit, but it is very fruity and very baking spice and the fruitiness kind of lends a little towards melony not not melony the singer but as in a melon like it's kind of melony i don't know it just is what it is a good amount of oak spice and it's like tangy oak. It's not like super sweet. It's not really dry. It's not spicy. It's kind of tangy. Really nice citrus zest vibe there too. All right, let's move on to the nose on the char level three. This is more caramel, more honey, more brown sugar, more in the molasses ballpark. Still spicy on the nose. Less fruit, less melon. More dark, more rich, more caramelized sugars. Interesting. Okay, let's nose char five. The heaviest char. The char of char char chars. I think they call it alligator char. Now this is starting to get a little bready. Um, it's like chocolate Danish, chocolate croissant, chocolate, chocolate and bread. Dates, almost fig. The uh, fruit becomes dark, rich, like compote fruit, like stewed fruit. And the oak is really dark and but sweet. All that caramelized sugars coming out of that heavily charred oak. And there's a there's a hint of a spice that I think's coming from the rye. Okay, let's tasty taste. Okay. It 
kind of goes in one direction for the first half of the palette, and then it switches and goes a different direction. Let's 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 hit these curves again. Caramel sweet up front, and then it switches and goes spicier and oak and rye and wheat come forward and it goes fruity on the finish and it's it's definitely more interesting on the palate than on the nose which is odd for me because i'm more of a nose guy like i i can pick out way more flavors on the nose than i ever can on the palate but this is a ride on the on the palate for this one What is that? There's like a really creamy, um, syrupy, kind of vanilla infused maple syrup note. I don't know. It's not super mapley though, but it's like a syrup, like a vanilla infused syrup. Wow. That, that's really good on the palate. That's exceptionally good on the palate. Uh, a lot better than on the nose. Let's try. Number three char. That brings forward lots of lots of rye, lots of wheat spice. The oak is there. It's uh, vanilla and cherry right on the front of the palate, then rye and wheat, and then the oak towards the finish. It leaves you with a nice um, hint of nuttiness, but Really pretty, really pretty, and just singy notes. And uh, almost uh, almost honey. It leaves you with like a honey feel in your mouth, like how your mouth gets, mouth gets kind of coated whenever you take like a spoonful of honey. That's what it leaves you with in the throat as well. It's in like a nice honey finish um, with just a hint of lime. Honey and lime. Like if you put lime and honey in a tea, that's the aftertaste, the, the finish that you're left with. Wow, that's, that's really interesting. Okay, so char five, medium toast. Oh, now that comes alive with, with a good amount of nuttiness. It, it, it's like um, toasted, Peanuts and almonds. Maybe even a, a little bit of cashew. Like mixed nuts that have been toasted. Honey, ro not honey roasted. Honey roasted is too strong. But just a, like a touch of honey, touch of salt, and, and those mixed nuts that have been roasted. And then there's also some fruitiness happening. It's like... um. What is that? I'm gonna have to go with a date. It's it's very similar to a date, but it leans a little more towards maybe a hint, like almost kiwi, but not quite kiwi. It's like dates and a hint of the sweetness from a kiwi. I, I don't know if that makes any sense. The oak shows up. It's very prominent there. The char is underlying all the other flavors you're getting. You can feel the char in your mouth. You can you, you can really taste it. And, and it also leaves you with like a honey finish, less of that citrus zest and more of just pure honey finish, like a like wildflower honey, maybe two below, like a really nice thick honey finish. Wow. So, of these three, so ch uh, char one, char three, char five, all medium toast, I'm going to have to go with char three medium toast as being my favorite, most enjoyable. This just has a little more of that oak char than I want to have. Um, 
It's not bad. I'm not saying it's bad in any way. I just prefer this mouthfeel and that that honey finish with the the citrus zest. That is just phenomenal. Mm, yeah, yeah. That's my winner. That seriously, that's like putting. Um, it's so odd because it's it strongly reminds me of of honeyed whiskeys, and obviously this is not. They're not doing any any uh, funky tricks with honey and barrels, and uh, but you're still getting that kind of sensation from the whiskey, and it's really all about the oils and how how uh, the esters are are being affected by the char level and the toast, and and it's giving you that really really viscous and honey like mouthfeel, so. That's fantastic. I really like that. It's so cool to see and be able to see across a range of different experimental char levels, toast levels. That's a fun experiment. I really got to hand it to Penelope for, for putting out products like that where they're really playing with it and really giving you a, 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 a plethora of products and different ways of expressing them so that you can kind of explore, you know, I mean, it's a growth experience for me. It's totally a learning thing. Now, I've got to uh, give a couple shout outs. These two samples were given to me by Deborah Cohen, who's one of my patrons. Thank you so much for these, Deborah. And then Ryan Butler helped me to get my hands on this bottle of Penelope, uh, which was the Texas Select 114 proof toasted series. Thank you very much, Ryan. And, uh, and really just thank you to Penelope for putting out really cool offerings and, and making it so that us whiskey geeks, and that's how I self-identify. Those are my pronouns, whiskey geek. I, um, I like learning about whiskey and tasting through these different process and, and really getting a better understanding of how this stuff works. So thanks for watching this, guys. I hope you guys geek out about this stuff as much as I do. And until next time, have a great day, and go Penelope Loser!